What if I told you that everything you're told about how to choose the right pillow is wrong? In this video, I'll reveal the one secret that no one talks about that's the key to getting your perfect night's sleep. One thing that I'm very picky about is to make sure that I take my pillow with me when I travel. If I'm not able to bring my pillow or if I forget, I roll up a large towel and shape it in a way to mimic my regular pillow. But you can't use it like a regular pillow. The key here is how you place it behind your head, which I'll describe later in this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Steven Park, an ENT surgeon and sleep medicine doctor. My passion is to help you get the sleep you need for the life you want. If you like this type of content, please click on the red subscribe button below and click the thumbs up button. By doing this, you can help me get my message out to as many people as possible. As I mentioned in past videos and blog posts, I've never been a great sleeper. When I was younger, I always had a hard time waking up and I always kept falling asleep during classes and lectures. However, I do remember two specific episodes of amazing sleep in my lifetime many years ago. When I last visited Korea in 1988 during high school, I had the best time with my aunt and uncle in Busan. The food was great and the family gatherings were even better. But the most memorable experience was the amazing quality of sleep I had while staying with my relatives. I did remember that they gave me a roll-type buckwheat husk-filled pillow to sleep on. My suspicion was confirmed many years later just after my first son was born. My father came over to help us out one night, and for whatever reason, I had to sleep on the living room sofa. Again, I slept much better than I normally did. But this time, I didn't use a pillow. Instead, I laid my head on the sloping armrest, which tilted my head back somewhat. Only after I became aware of upper airway anatomy with my medical training did I fully understand why I slept better. It all made sense. Everyone has their favorite pillow. Some people like soft, down foot pillows, and others like firm pillows. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of different sizes, styles, colors, dimensions, covers, fillers, and even fragrances of pillows. If you start researching pillows and mattresses, I guarantee you'll go down a rabbit hole of unending safety concerns about various materials used during manufacturing. There are also lots of websites and tips for what type of pillow is best. But there's one thing about pillows that's almost never addressed directly. How pillows can affect your airway and breathing at night. Granted, there are generic descriptions of anti-snoring pillows, but an explanation of how they work is not very satisfying. We know that for everyone, whether or not you have sleep apnea, the tongue will fall back most when you're on your back, and this is mainly because of gravity. Things get much worse when you reach deep sleep, and especially during REM sleep when your throat muscles relax completely. And this is why many people like to sleep on their side or tummies. In another video called Why You Choke, I talk about why modern humans like to sleep on their sides or tummies. And this is because as our faces are slowly getting smaller, as a result, our airways are getting smaller as well. Because of this, most modern humans like you probably like to sleep on your side or stomach, right? Even then, side sleep is usually not good enough to prevent your tongue and other throat muscles from closing in, especially when you reach REM sleep when you're dreaming, and that's when your throat muscles are completely relaxed. Basically, the best pillow is the one that opens your airway the most when you sleep. If you've ever taken a CPR course, you'll remember the ABCs, which stand for airway, breathing, and circulation. To secure the airway, you're taught to tilt the head back. If you're able to look at the airway through a tiny flexible fiber optic camera like I used to do with my patients every day, what you see is that the more you tilt your head back, the more the space there is behind your tongue and soft palate. These contour pillows that you read about are a variation of pillows that are typically made of memory foam and give you more support behind your neck and less support behind your head. And this allows you to keep your head tilted back a bit, preventing your head from bending forward, which can narrow your airway. Even before we had fiber optic cameras, ENTs like myself were taught to use a small mirror through the mouth to see the voice box. The patient is told to lean forward with the nose lifted up a bit like you're smelling a rose. This head forward position will also open the space behind the tongue allowing you to see the voice box easier. This shows how pillows that adjust your head and neck position can help you breathe better, snore less, and sleep better. In people with small jaws and small airways, people will keep a head forward position like this that's easier to breathe during the day. Although it helps with breathing, poor posture that results can lead to a lot of back and neck problems. It's truly gratifying to see these patients have much better upright posture just after improving their partially blocked airways. Many of you are probably thinking that these examples don't apply to you since you like to sleep on your side or stomach. Even then, your head position plays an important role in how open your airway is, especially in deep or REM sleep. I've had patients experiment with using soft neck collars, 
while sleeping on the side to prevent the chin from dropping far too much. Opening your mouth during sleep makes things much worse. So it's important to keep your mouth closed. You can find out why this is important in my last video called Should You Tape Your Mouth for Better Sleep? For various reasons such as after surgery or due to a back, neck, or shoulder injury, some people who normally prefer to sleep on their side or tummy must sleep on their backs. Most will figure out a way to find a pillow to tilt the head back, but if this is impossible, some prefer to sleep without a pillow at all, and this forces you to bend your head back all the way, which also opens your airway significantly. If you're not able to get the quality of sleep that you want, before investing in a new mattress, think about finding the right pillow. Does it allow you to tilt your head back comfortably when on your back, as well as during side sleep? Will that position hold all night? Oftentimes, these memory foam pillows will soften and flatten after a few hours due to body heat. Personally, I got rid of my memory foam pillow due to concerns about off-gassing. And you'll need to experiment with different sizes, shapes, and configurations. With some troubleshooting as well as being persistent, you should be able to find the right pillow for a great night's sleep. Currently, I use a buckwheat husk filled pillow, mainly because I can mold it to the shape I want, and it stays for the most part. Before I go to bed, I mold up the bottom half of the pillow with a depression on top. I actually went one step further and placed a 1 inch dowel inside the bottom half of the pillow with enough husk surrounding it to make it feel comfortable. This gives it a lot more support throughout the night. With any pillow, it's common that either you slide down in the bed or the pillow will slide up. There are lots of creative ways to prevent this, but that's for another future video. Sometimes you'll have to be a bit more creative and go beyond trying different pillows. For example, if you can't sleep anymore on your side due to an injury or surgery, there are various options for side sleep. One interesting wedge mattress topper and pillow that I saw is called Metcline. It has a cutout on top where you place your arm and the pillow goes above the top where you place your head. For people who prefer to sleep on their backs or must sleep on their backs for various reasons, the traditional tip is to place books or bricks on the top two legs of your bed frame to raise the top of your bed a few inches. This is also a common suggestion for acid reflux. Much more convenient options include a full width mattress topper wedge as well as one that goes under the top half of your mattress, this one's called Reflux Guard. If you're traveling and you don't like the soft and squishy down pillows, then roll up the hotel bath towel into a roll and place it just behind the back of your neck to allow your head to tilt back a bit. You may have to adjust the thickness to find a comfortable position. Even if you're a side sleeper, you'll need to be resourceful to keep your head in a slightly cocked back or what's called an extended position. Always make sure to keep your mouth closed. As I mentioned in previous videos, it's also important to be able to breathe through your nose. Take a look at my video, 7 Natural Ways to Unstuff Your Stuffy Nose. So what's your favorite pillow, and what has worked for you in the past? Please enter your answer in the comments area below.